That's fun. Fucking mosquitoes. Ah. Uh. Ah, it's biting my fucking eyebrow. so I'm going to try to think of something to say so I can figure out if it sounds good or not. It's got uh, foam around it and it's unidirectional so I can aim it away from my nose and it shouldn't pick up my breathing as much and it also won't clip the mic when I exhale loudly like this. Tau doesn't like to be shifted over bumps. I adjusted the shifter so that it'd be a little easier to do uh, positive upshifts. I was having to kind of lift my foot off the peg to do a real solid upshift. I angled it downward though so I can just use my toe now. got a uh, 17 tooth front sprocket for it which will be a uh, two teeth up from stock I believe so I'll be able to run at like 55 60 miles an hour or more without it being without it revving as high be a little better for the roads around here less stressful on the motor not as loud and annoying the videos I saw of people testing them out, it really is it doesn't have slower acceleration overall just because you're shifting a little less and the shifts on this bike take a long time for a bike because of this clunky ass cheap transmission. Actually now that the transmission's broken in and I've gotten it through a few oil changes, it's shifting a lot smoother getting into neutral way way easier than stock or uh, with zero kilometers on it. I'm up to 1136 kilometers if the odometer is to be believed. I have adjusted the chain three times and after this ride it's gonna need its fourth so I got a new chain for it not a great chain, but a decent O-ring chain that shouldn't need to be adjusted quite as much. Nah. I got a new uh, spark plug for it that people said it was supposed to be better, but I got the wrong plug. I ordered the correct one and got the wrong one, and it's one of those things that's 
cheap enough that it's not worth uh, sending back and fighting over. I'll just keep it in the garage. Maybe one day I'll run into someone who needs that exact plug. Maybe I can hang it on the wall as art. Let's see how it sounds with the visor up. It should do better in this kind of wind, but it's never going to be great. The helmet mic, because all the wind is just kind of directed straight at, straight at the microphone like this. Let's see how it is like this, how I ride most of the time at low speeds. Aside from the fact that this bike completely stopped on me on the side of the road, I believe because it was raining, I don't have many complaints about it. The clutch is a little wonky. The, the friction point is really far out from the bar. It kind of, kind of seems to move around a little. I guess as the clutch plates heat up, it gets grabbier or less grabby. So the friction, like the grab point, changes a lot as you ride and depending on the conditions. I think I found out what the problem was from the rain because I was messing with the electrics in my garage and I got the thing to completely go completely dead the dash lights and everything didn't come on at all and I wiggled the main fuse and it's been fine ever since so I think maybe the main fuse isn't sealed very well or it could be something close to the main fuse that I also sort of accidentally wiggled at the same time so it could be the uh, ignition coil wiring which would make sense with the way it died and it it would crank and it was getting fuel but it was like it was getting a weak spark or an intermittent spark so it would make sense if the ignition coil had gotten wet and the ignition coil is just loose mounted, so it would be easy to shake it. And it's also just, just hanging out off the side of the bike, so it would also be easy to get it wet. Wind's picking up and there's some dark clouds, clouds rolling over. Normally I wouldn't be bothered by the rain if I wasn't riding this thing. I've got to go through and seal all of these plugs with silicone. Just to eliminate them as a possibility for the problem. And uh, the battery is right here the ignition coils right here so they've got a little splash guard here but like this is the side of the battery right here and you can get water up in there and those are completely unprotected it's the only reason I left these panels on I think I'll probably <coughs> silicone them as well as I can and find some sort of thick plastic bag like a Ziploc or something to give them a little protection
work with the guy who prepped this bike. He says he already put a bigger jet in it. So I think he said he just he had a set of jets. Some of them were bigger than others, and this one might have gotten the bigger jet. So it might actually have a, too big of a main jet. Might also just run like shit. So I got to run it real hard until it starts cutting out and then shut it off and pull the plug and see if the plug is fouled up. Of course that could also indicate that it's not sparking very well. Which it definitely has a problem with. put just a normal round glass headlight on it I've got a couple in the garage that I could get on there in like an hour problem being this plastic is the only thing protecting those plugs from just getting all of the dirt and water into them this headlight's pretty useless at night it's good for going about 20 miles an hour tops One thing that's cool is I uh, took the headlight off, so I had to unplug it, and then I plugged it back in, and now the high beam indicator works. some tree fellers looks like some tree fellers oh it's all tech Also got some real fork fluid to put in it. Evening out the fork fluid and having it be actual like fork fluid and not weird black sludge that Tao Tao uses will help a lot with the braking and the handling. Currently under hard braking the front end shakes back and forth like it wants to death wobble. I've actually gotten kind of used to it. So that'll be fork fluid, front sprocket and chain, and check the spark plug. All that I'm going to do later this week after I get my Z put back together so I at least have a bike. The Z is currently taken apart for uh, tires taking the wheels and tires in to work tomorrow change those out for some 
Michelin Road GT5s, I think they are. And I just put a new battery in it, had the factory battery in it from 2019, so that's over two years old. And it was draining out on its own. It needs to be at about 85% charge to crank the Z. And it only took about a day for it to get down to 75%, so it wasn't really working anymore. Gotta look through deer, uh, gotta look for deer through there. All the way through this section here. They cross a lot there. Crows. A whole murder. Don't crash and spill your groceries all over. a golf game with my brat. I still don't know how this thing is, how much grip it's going to have over this kind of loose gravel. The idea of a bike having any grip on gravel just doesn't work in my brain. It's really holding me back as far as it goes on cornering this thing. Although I'm getting comfortable with little bits of wheel spin. Just letting the back of it dance around. Keeping my weight on the front even when I'm accelerating. It's all very foreign to me. And it doesn't help that the gas can claps against the tank when I go over bumps. The gas cap is trash. It buzzes and claps against the tank and I can rock it back and forth. Who knows if it's actually sealing the tank. It doesn't particularly smell of gasoline, which what I guess would mean there's a good seal. Any amount of open air and you can smell gas. It's so volatile. And I'm still on my journey of loctiting every single bolt on this thing. Every once in a while I just take off a, you know, I just grab a socket and find every bolt that that socket fits, take it off, and loctite it. Wheel spin. cashier at the pharmacy saw my gloves and asked if I was a BMX or a motocrosser and I said no but I guess with that absolute rip across that gravel with the back tire just flying around means I, I guess I am technically a motocrosser oh shit I didn't leave myself anywhere to park Good. I'm very wary of the uh, fuel lines in this thing not being able to handle gas with alcohol in it. So I shut the fuel off and run it out. 
every time I'm going to let it sit for more than a few hours. It does take forever for it to run out though. This little pipe here is a filter that comes off of the header. When you're on the throttle it sucks in air and it adds it to the exhaust to burn, to burn un, unburnt fuel, which is why it pops so much. So you can feel it drawing air in when you're on the throttle and then as soon as you let off the throttle it blows more air out. Hey, there we go. I have to leave my visor down because of the goddamn mosquitoes. Okay, can't can't park a bike there. something under this kickstand in a second. I had the wheels here to wash them. No point in balancing them on they're caked in mud and grease. There's about a eighth of an inch layer of grease on every single part of those wheels. I don't know if you can tell why. This is the old battery. Charge it up. I'm just gonna measure how long it takes to lose its charge. I'm also going to have this battery on maintenance since it's new. Oh, it's supposed to be on a ground when it's in the vehicle. What are any of these grounds? That's not a ground. Well, I'll fuck with that in a minute. This is what the Z looks like with no wheels. Sick, right? <laughs> 